Okay. Okay. So this is for anyone that needs to complete the 9/11 ELA um, nine or ELA um, eleven essay. Um, let me share my screen. Um, Okay. okay, so you should see me and you should also see the screen. Aviso de confirma la contraseña del MacBook Pro. Okay, and I'm going to try to put also the subtitles from one. Okay, I wish my screen looked exactly like yours. It looks a little bit different. Okay, so for anyone that needs to do this essay, because you know who you are because you're not here in after school, let's read this together. Okay, of course my screen looks different. Absolutely. Okay, so this is what you're going to get on the regents exam and what we're doing in ELA 9 with Miss Rule um so also ELA 11 with Miss Hernandez. Okay, so this is Henry David Thoreau. He's the narrator, he's the author. Okay, he is a transcendentalist. Um he's like a 20th century philosopher, like a modern day philosopher. I can't see you, but you should be able to see me at the same time. Okay, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear. Nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the morrow of life, to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. And if it proved to be mean, why then to get the whole and genuine meanness of it and publish its meanness to the world? Or if it were sublime to know it by experience and be able to give a true account of it in my next excursion? For most men, it appears to me, are in a strange uncertainty about it whether it is of the devil or of God, and have somewhat hastily concluded that it is the chief end of man here to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Let us spend one day as deliberately as nature and not be thrown off the track by every nutshell and mosquito's wing that falls on the rails. Let us rise early and fast or break fast, gently, and without perturbation. Let company come and let company go. Let the bells ring and the children cry, determined to make a day of it. Why should we knock under and go with the stream? Let us not be upset and overwhelmed in that terrible rapid and whirlpool called a dinner, situated in the meridian, meridian shallows. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, whether this danger and you are safe for the rest of the way is downhill. I think I, I hope I pronounced that right. With unrelaxed nerves, with morning vigor, sail by it. Look another way, tied to the mast like Ulysses. If the engine whistles, let it whistle till it is hoarse for its pains. If the bell rings, why should we run? We will consider what kind of music they are like. 
Let us settle ourselves and work and wedge our feet downward through the mud and slush of opinion and prejudice and tradition and delusion and appearance that alluvion which covers the globe through Paris and London, through New York and Boston and Concord, through church and state, through poetry and philosophy and religion, till we come to a hard bottom and rocks in place, which we can call reality and say this is and no mistake, and then begin having a point the appui. I hope I said that right. Below fresh, below fresh fit and frost and fire, a place where you might found a wall or a state or set a lamppost safely, or perhaps a gauge, not a millimeter, but a realometer that future ages might know how deep a freshet of shams and appearances had gathered from time to time. If you stand right fronting and face to face to a fact, you will see the sun glimmer on both its surfaces as if it were a scimitar and feel its sweet edge dividing you through the heart and marrow. And so you will happily conclude your mortal career. Be it life or death, we crave only reality. If we are really dying, let us hear the rattle in our throats and feel cold in the extremities. If we are alive, let us go about our business. Line 36. I'm down here. Time. Time is but the stream I go a fishing in. I drink at it, but while I drink, I see the sandy bottom and detect how shallow it is. Its thin current slides away, but eternity remains. I would drink deeper fish in the sky whose bottom is pebbly with stars i cannot count one i know not the first letter of the alphabet i have always been regretting that i was not wise as the day i was born the intellect is a cleaver it discerns and rifts its way into the secret of things I do not wish to be any more busy with my hands than is necessary. My head is hands and feet. I feel all my best faculties concentrated in it. My instinct tells me that my head is an organ for burrowing, as some creatures use their snout and forepaws, and with it I would mine, and, and with it, I would mine and burrow my way through these hills. I think that the richest vein is somewhere hereabouts. So by the divining rod and thin rising vapors, I judge. And here I will begin to mine. Henry David Thoreau excerpted from his text Walden, circa 1910. Okay, let's exit. Okay, give it a second. Okay, so we're not going to have subtitles right now. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so one of the things that that's a lot, there's a lot in there. And I would have to upload this to Cami to write on it, which I can do that. So what we said, um, which I thought was very important, but the kids came up with in our discussion right which is what you have to write about that's what that's what the teacher is asking you during the text analysis the persuasive part like you have to have an argument so we said in Spanish en el texto extraído de Walden de Henry David Thoreau el propósito del autor es reintroducir al hombre en la condición humana a través de la naturaleza, en, en sencilleza. Esto, 
la humanidad no puede avanzar eh, forjando eh, relaciones con otras personas si uno no se conoce, conoce a, a sí mismo. El hombre puede existir independiente de las posesiones hechas por el hombre eh, si se su, sumerge en la esto, en, en la esto, esta re, reintroducción de sí mismo a su, su barrio individual. Las personas se go, mira, gobiernan a sí mismas ya su sociedad, otra oportun oportunidad de ser mejores. Esto, then the kids went on to, to say, so that's like the premise, the claim. So what they're saying is, okay, well, what we talked about and what we came up with was, and I'm going to go to English. Okay, was something like this, like these are our rough notes. Right. So in the text excerpted from Walden. So Walden is a book and there's a man. He's an author written by Henry David Thoreau. You should still be able to see this text and hear and see me somehow. The author's purpose is to reintroduce man to the human condition through nature's simplicity. So humanity cannot advance itself by forging relationships. Excuse me. Sorry with other people if one doesn't know thyself. So man can exist independent of man-made possessions if he immerses himself in nature. And when I say man, I mean all human beings. You can change that. Like the themes in literature, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus self, man's internal and or external conflict. That is not politically correct anymore. However, Those, those are the antiquities of, of, of the language, of the etymology of English and literature. So you can change that. You can say human beings because that is what we mean. So the children in ELA 9, they, in the discussion, they discuss that um, if, if man, if, if one immerses themselves his self, herself, themselves, however, the identity. If you immerse yourself in nature, if one does that, it's like you, you go back to your simplest form, right? So when we're born and we're born natural from God, or like, you know, like the process is natural, like we don't just appear, it's not magical, right? There's, this is like a natural process, like birth. It's like, on our journey of life, we acquire lots of commodities, lots of entities, lots of things that we can buy and sell off of the shelf. So Henry David Thoreau, he, he's saying that you don't need those things to exist. Like whatever society equips you with, that's something they're putting on you. That man-made entity That thing that's manufactured that you bought, you don't need that to reach or understand who you are. And so also you don't need those things to unearth your greatest potential. You can exist beyond just because society told you to exist or they told you that your purpose is to get married and, and, and reproduce. That's not your purpose. That's not your pride and purpose. Your pride and purpose is what you tell your own self. So if society, if being in the global community and in the world with people has caught, like you caught common or you, you got, you, you got tricked, like some type of chicanery and you don't know who you are anymore. That's okay. I have an, like Henry David Thoreau, he's got an answer for that. Remove yourself from the society, remove yourself from what man has put on you as a burden of that, which now you are carrying on your back, go to the forest, go back to nature, go live in a tree, which is exactly what he did. Go, go immerse yourself in nature because that's where you are. That's where you were born. And that's where you're going to end if you so choose. So if you've forgotten who you are, you lost your way, go back to nature. Go back to the beginning, be simple on it, find your individuality and so also your path, your adulthood through nature. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so um, the writing strategy in, so the writing strategy is conflict, 
because the conflict exists between man versus man, man versus nature, man versus the self, but it's the real world, right? Like he's, he talks, we selected two quotes thus far, but he, like, there's a lot going on here, but when you strip it down, he talks a lot about like the realness of life. And so in addition to this stuff about nature and God and getting getting back to who you are and unearthing your greatest potential yet to be defined has to do with coming back to the your simplest form. It's like a math problem that you reduce. Like if you have, I don't know, three over nine, like three ninths, can't you reduce that to one third? Three goes into three once, three goes into nine, three times. You're, you're not going to leave it like that you're not going to leave it undone you know you wouldn't just proceed to proceed because somebody told you you're not you're not living you're not in existence to exist because somebody told you to exist you're not coming to work or coming to school every day to push papers just to push papers to pass the time it has to be purposeful it has to be deep it has to be meaningful it has to linger it has to be significant so that's what henry david thoreau was saying he's a man and he's saying your life matters if you want it to. So don't get caught on society because society doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define where you're going and it doesn't define your legacy in terms of how you're going to leave the world. If you're going to leave it, how you're going to leave it in terms of your, like your legend, like, like what you're, what you're leaving behind. So it isn't the quantity of years that you put into living it's the quality. It's it's not it's not longevity. It's not well. I I lived for a hundred years. I win. Nobody wins at the end of life. You just get dead. Like you don't get to take all your stuff with you. But if you have something to say, like for example, whose birthday we just celebrated, who just passed, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., because he lives amongst us, because he has something to say. He had more than a dream. He had a life, it was a lifestyle. It's not just a dream. Like it was a lifestyle that which we still can't achieve. We're still working towards. So he, as far as I'm concerned, like his birthday is more than important, but I don't need to celebrate his birthday to remember what he stood for because he lives amongst us. So if you want to live your life with meaning, it's not quantity, it's depth. It's depth of life. You're not just going through motions to feed a society or to quench the thirst of a society. It has to be better than that. And what Henry David Thoreau is saying is that human beings, sorry, I should do this differently. Human beings are capable. Human beings are capable of being better than they think they are. But yet they seem, so few of us seem to get to where it is that we wanna go. And very few of us stand out from a crowd and very few of us seem to have something to say of that which is everlasting, of that which lingers on a society. It isn't necessarily the answer to the problem. You're not trying to find like a quick fix or a resolution. You're trying to do something of that which is sustainable, right? Okay, I hope this is clear. So what the kids talked about was, this is the central idea of Henry David Thoreau's Walden, and this is an excerpt from that text. So if you reintroduce your own self to your own self via nature, then you are giving your chance, like you're re-gifting yourself to the world and to yourself because you're giving yourself a second chance to be better. But it isn't just a second chance because you deserve a second chance. You haven't earned that second chance. It's a second chance that you want to create an opportunity of that which you have not to 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 um to to see how how like to to exceed your greatest potential or to exceed of that which what you're doing right now like oh I get up I go to work I work a nine to five job like I come home to my wife and kids or whatever rinse repeat I'm not happy okay so that's on you it's like so like in his he's saying like like he, he doesn't like go to the therapist and get like medicine. He goes, he 
removes himself from society so that he can see clearly and have a new perspective and have a new vision and find his purpose. That's the point, the, pers the point of perspective. So he gleans perspective, not because somebody else is teaching him something, because he's teaching his own self, because we have it in us. We just haven't connected with it in however long because of external things in society. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So in the philosophical text, this is what the kids wrote. Thoreau states, I wanted to live deep and suck out all the morrow of life, to live so sturdily, he continues, to reduce it to its lowest terms, right? Lines four through seven he talks about that. The second quote, you really do need three quotes. We only chose two so far. The children discussed the above quotation emphasizes that the author, Henry David Thoreau, cares about living a meaningful life, one that is significant, layered, and valuable, not because it is long, but because it is deep and full and filled with depth. Okay. Yeah, eso, dos, yeah. En el, texto en, el, en el texto filosófico, Thoreau afirma que quería vivir profundamente y sucionar toda la med médula de la vida. Vivir con tanta, sorry, fermet, Ay, no, I'm sorry, If, fermet, anteriores para hasta sus términos más bajos. Esto cuatro a siete. Los, eh, reducir la, la, la cita enfatiza que el autor Henry David Thoreau se preocupa por vivir una vida significativa, estratificada y valiosa, no porque sea larga, sino porque es profunda y esto, que esto le, 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 le llena de profundidad. I'm sorry. Forgive us. Um, so, so, yes. So when you write the introduction and the first paragraph, you want to select a quote and then explain it. The, the other quote that they chose, now I should be able to write on this. Okay, so I have to, I think, come out of this. Get out. Okay. The other quote, he's green, that the children chose. Okay was in line 13, let us spend one day as deliberately as nature, right? So like personifying nature there and not be thrown off the track. And then we stopped it here. So like, don't get caught on common. Don't get caught on the shenanigans of society. Don't do that, you can do better. That was the second quote. Sorry, usually I use Cami. So we are using PowerPoint today, just not to come in and out of um, this screen. And I changed everything to Spanish. So I hope that you are compartiendo la pantalla. This is working. And then the first one is lines four. It's his seven. They picked, I wanted to live deep here and suck out all the morrow of life to live, hey girls, to live so sturdily and spartan like as to put to rout all that was not life. We shortened this quotation. If you want to write the entire 
entire thing, you go right ahead. To cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. And if it proved to be mean, why then to get the whole and genuine meanness of it and publish its meanness to the world? So he he is looking to, yes, it's man's search for meaning, right? This man, Henry David Thoreau, but again, I don't mean only men, I mean human beings. You're always searching for meaning. You're always searching for purpose because purpose keeps us alive, right? Like Jesse Jackson always says, keep hope alive. Well, how do you think you keep hope alive? By people having a purpose. So some people's purpose, you know, like when Donald Trump was, was president was to listen to that uniquery and, you know, do the wrong thing, turn on Fox 5 News and fo like follow, you know, whatever they say, which is lies anyway. You don't want to do that. You want to turn that off. That is not a credible news station. Please turn it off. Channel 13, PBS, with or without Judy Woodruff and Gwen Eiffel. Used to be the McNeil Lara hour. I'm showing my age. Like, please just turn off that Fox 5, okay? It's not going to help you. Like, um, when you read a text of that, which is original and authentic like this, you can interpret for your own self what it means. This is just a guide. You don't have to write any of this. You don't have to listen to me. This is just a guide for people who did not do that essay, for people who are struggling on it, for people who are not done. Um, okay. So here, you do see that publish its meanness, he wants to teach something. Thoreau does want to glean life lessons and then he wants to publish it. Not to turn a profit, but to teach people what he has learned because the lesson is so valuable. Yeah. It's like a TED talk, but for free. So the second quote the children picked let us spend one day as deliberately. So you want to be deliberate. You want to be purposeful. You want to be immersed in nature so that you can, it's like you're, you're grappling with your own inner and external struggle at the same time, but you're doing it as an individual. You're doing it in isolation of your family or of people because they will influence your opinion. And you as a human being were, were born to circumvent and supersede that. You don't need somebody to tell you what to think. You can tell your own self what to think. You're capable. Should you not wish to be capable, dumb is forever by all means. You know what I mean? So there's an attitude there. There is an argumentative wall there. He's telling people like, go figure it out. So Ulysses, um, Homer's Ulysses, he was, he went on a, on a journey like around the world to find out who he was. I didn't read that book until college. That's ancient, ancient Greek literature. Um, so these are just some references. You don't need to understand everything to be able to write about this. Sorry, make it speak to you use this in a way, take his lesson that he's trying to teach you, make this work for you. If you're like, okay, it's me and this text. Okay, I have a regents to take. Oh my God, the regents is in two weeks, the end of January. Like I didn't do so well on the mock exam. And I feel like that speaks to my value. Nothing, there's no percentage. There's no grade that speaks to your value as a human being. Your self-worth exceeds any type of score anyone could give you. However, it bothers you that you didn't do good on the mock exam. It bothers me. The regions matters, right? You want to get that advanced regions diploma, you can get it. It's you in the text. Some, some kids like, like me, I don't do good in the group sometimes. With math, yes, because I don't understand the math. I need help. But like the real o meter that he's talking about, that's he that's exactly what it sounds like. And he he made up that word. He's like a Shakespeare in his own right. He just doesn't write plays and stories. So he's he's being real. You have to be real with your own self. You can't scare yourself. You can't look at yourself in the mirror and be afraid. 
you should move people with your words. And it shouldn't just be to shock or move them because you can. It should be to help them to augment their life as well. Teach them a life lesson of that which is valuable, of that which they can carry with them and teach to their, to their children. Teach them a life lesson of that which does not expire, of that, does, of that which does not have a shelf expiration date, of that which transcends the test of time. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, we die. We're mortal. We all get dead at some point. So do something with your life that's purposeful, that's good, that's positive. If, if you find that, then what you leave behind with your mind will stand the test of time because you will have something to say of that which is priceless and cannot be bought or sold. That's the premise of what Thoreau in this excerpt is saying okay and then lastly because we have to pick a third quote too and we haven't um we haven't picked it yet I wish this were like better orchestrated I'm sorry I just don't want to write the essay for the children I don't need to because the children are writing it for me um okay I like this part I know not the first letter of the alphabet. So like, you don't gotta be speaking no English. You can speak anything of that which you please. It isn't a bar, it isn't a deficit or a disability to speak another language or to have English as your second or other language. That's a gift because you already know something everybody else doesn't. So while the society may treat you or perceive you as if you are coming from a place of deficit or hindrance, or you've been stymied. There's a barrier. That's not politically correct anymore. We don't say that. It's not a language barrier. That's a celebration. You know a language, a second language, or another language other than English that nobody else knows. You know more about language and people and culture and development than anybody else, than the adults around you. That's a gift to celebrate that. You don't need to know A. You don't need to know A to get to Z. You need to know your own self. And then you'll know A, B, C, D, and then you'll know them all. Um, I have always been regretting that I was not wise as the day I was born. So when you're born, you're innocent, you're a sponge, you're absorbing all these things. As we get older, we feel these things called fear. We feel these things called anxiety. We feel something called nervous and we forget who we are and we second guess ourselves. And we think, I don't have anything to offer. I don't have anything to give. And Thoreau says, wait a minute. Yes, you do. Go back to where you came from. Go back to nature and get away from this, this common, the masses. Figure it out and then teach us better. Hey. Right? So I think one of the quotes that the kids were looking at, but we didn't choose it yet, is, you know, is somewhere here. Okay, he says, okay, the intellect is a cleaver, like a meat cleaver, like chop, chop, chop. It discerns and rifts its way into the secret of things. I do not wish to be any more busy with my hands than is necessary. Don't be busy just to look busy. Don't do that. Be productive, but don't waste time. Don't be busy just because you want to look busy in front of somebody. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do pomp and circumstance of that which does not equate to nothing, of that which has no meaning at the end. My head is hands and feet. I feel all my best faculties, like faculties, like the uh, sensory faculties. I feel all my best faculties concentrated in it. My instinct tells me that my head is an organ for burrowing. Okay. Burrowing is digging like the animal does that. So like if you don't have no legs or you don't have no feet or you don't have handsies, you don't need those extremities. So he's being literal and figurative here. You don't need those because you have this. See, because you could put me in prison, 
but nobody can take, you can't imprison this. If I want to hear an opera in my mind while I'm in lockdown or whatever, like you can't take that from me. That's here. So my head is my hands and feet. If I want to burrow, if I want to dig deeper, you know, like the squirrel, the, you know, the animal with a ponytail, he's he, with his paws, he make the, the hole and he put the, the how you say, you say, you say the chip, the chip monkey, the squirrel, he puts some acorn or some food in the, in the hole. And then if you dig it up, he eats it and he continues to dig like some animals, they make tunnels like that. I don't know how you call this animal in English. The, 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 I don't know how you call him in English. It's an animal. It's like very scary, actually. I don't like him. The animal that he digs under the ground, he makes tunnels. <laughs> he supersedes man. Like he don't care. It's your property. It's his property. I forget how you say that in English, but the animal, as some creatures use their snout, their nose, and four paws, hands, and with it, I would mine. When you mine for gold, you know, you mine, you, you, you sifting out the useless from the valuable. So, he, so figuratively, so lit, lit, figuratively, we are mining through, through life what is valuable and what is purposeless so that we can get to the core of purpose and useful. But you got to burrow, you got to dig, dig, dig deeper so that if you want something more than just what's on the surface. I hope this was helpful. Okay, so it's tomorrow in this rules class, or if you're in ELA 11, we will write um, to the introductory paragraph, paragraph one, explanation of the quote, second quote, explanation, we're going to do a third quote, explanation. Um, connected to their author's writing strategy, and then the conclusion. I hope this was helpful. I love you. Oh, I love you, children. He's, he's, um, this man is getting it right. He's getting it right. He's brave. Um, consider this, consider this last bit here, Eppers, as a third quote. And we don't have to put the whole thing, but we should have three. Yeah. I think in addition to being a transcendentalist, like meaning like someone that transcends like the literal, like and immerses himself in nature, like Thoreau, he's like Jesus, like he's savage. <laughs> he says whatever he wants. Like he's going to get you to where it is that you need to be. And if you don't want to get there, he's going to write it down and he's going to stamp his own learning. And he's going to remind you in this little book of his called Walden. Thank you for having me. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. Absolutely terrifying. I hope that that recorded. Okay. See you tomorrow, children. Okay, Mr. Vito, what you, my what you, unconditional, unconditionally, Mr. Vito loves you, unconditionally. Thank you for listening to that. Yep.